I've done and we've done a lot of projects at ServiceNow, and some of them are kind of more business focused, some are more what I call kind of classical engineering work. This one was really a lot of really close to the metal engineering to make this work, so I'm really proud of a team that put this together, and we're super excited about letting you get access to it. Talking a little more about this lab instance, though, if you think about it, it's a little dated. I mean, we're asking you which labs you want to take. That's kind of last year. Should we be able to predict the labs that you might want to take? Maybe based on labs you took this year, labs you took last year, your job title. It seems like we ought to be able to be a little bit smarter in terms of this app. So we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to show you how to add some machine learning to this application you just saw. So let me bring up Alan Leinwand and Carl Vanderpoel to show you how to add some machine learning. Come on up, guys. Okay. All right, welcome. So, very exciting topic, machine learning. I'm Carl. I'm Alan. There we go. Lost his illumination. Um, machine learning, you've heard a lot about it uh, during this conference, so we're going to show you what we've built, um, and let's just dive right into it. There are three things that we want to talk about. First of all, we want to talk about what we believe is machine learning. So let's put a little context on it, because everything is called machine learning nowadays. It's the big marketing word. So what do we mean with it? Second of all, we're going to talk about what we've built in the platform. And that's the result of the DX Continuum acquisition uh, that we did six months ago. And then lastly, as Pat already pointed out, we are going to build a Netflix-like recommendation app or an Amazon-like recommendation app, but now to pick Knowledge Labs. So, um, so with that, let's get started. So let's, let's shed a little light on what we believe and how we look at machine learning. And I already said machine learning is a field full of buzzwords, and, and uh, Joe and Mike already talked about IoT and big data. Um, and for those of you who are a little bit familiar with you know, Gartner Group, Gartner typically talks about the hype curve. And the hype curve has a slope of disillusionment and then eventually a plateau of productivity. And it's our job when we start researching all these technologies to figure out which ones of these technologies are still on the slope of disillusionment and which ones are ready for enterprise applications. And we want to bake them into the platform when we draw that conclusion. So Alan, do you want to shed a little light on, on all these buzzwords out here and, and, and put some context? What are we going to do and what have we done? Sure. Now, machine learning, as you said, is, is full of lots of terms. And we've been talking about it for the last few days. And I hate to break it to Pat, but I really don't want Skynet to be around, because that means they're all terminators. But you know, that's not machine learning in my mind. What we want to do is we want to be able to think about how can we be most useful to bring machine learning to our platform. And in doing so, we want to build something called supervised machine learning. And what supervised machine learning means in a little bit of detail is you specify input, you specify tables of information. That tables of information guides the machine using what's called training data. And then based upon that training data, you build a predictive model. And you take that predictive model, and then you put it back into your instance. And then once you put it back into your instance, you're going to actually be able to use that data via an API call. So we're really trying to have a data-driven behavior for machine learning. You know, not doing cars. We're not doing chess. We didn't want to name it after a dead genius because we wanted to be relevant. We wanted to make sure that what we're doing here is something that is very pragmatic, because that's what we do here at ServiceNow. So supervised machine learning, right? It really starts with data. And that's the cool thing, because you guys have been building apps. And you've been running apps on the platform. It serves it now. So you have tons of data. So, but leveraging that data is pretty complex. And I know some of you have already tried to do this and have been experimenting, just like us, with machine learning technologies. And what do you need to do if, you, if it's not in a platform? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of you have been starting to play with machine learning, as, as, as uh, Carl's been saying, and it really involves doing a lot of different things. You have to take terabytes of data out of your instance, perhaps. 
You have to stand up servers and get around a data center and have some fun racking and stacking. You have to install machine learning software. You need to perhaps find some data scientists that you can hire and actually do all this for you. But we didn't want to have to make you do all that on ServiceNow. We want to take the complexity out. We want to make it very timely in order to get it done. And we want to make sure that you can do it in a cost-effective way. We want to make machine learning simple, because what we want you to do is build really smart, amazing applications. Machine learning, simple, right? That's what we're all about. So let's talk a little bit about machine learning on the platform. Um, and as you know, the thing that we are really proud of is our multi-instance uh, architecture. So we don't intermingle data from customers, which is very important for you know, the CISOs and your bosses, et cetera. And you're probably thinking, like, yeah, but I really don't care. I just want to get my data and how you store it. But in the case of machine learning, you should care. Because in this single instance that you have where your data is stored, that's where we are now also put the machine learning capabilities. So we do not apply machine learning on the aggregate of all our data centers, on all the data of all of you. We apply it on the data that sits in your instance. And why should you care? Because that allows that the predictions that we train of your data will be much more accurate and applicable for your business. So that's a really important point. So I, with ca I care, Carl, in case you're wondering. You care. I care. You care about a lot of things. Um, so earlier this week, we announced the service intelligent automation engine. And I just put a picture up here from our family portrait. So if you go on our website, you'll probably see this in the next coming days. Maybe it's already there. They probably updated the website. I just wanted to point out on that family portrait what it is that we're going to see and what it is that we're going to talk about. So there are a couple of things. You know, we talked about performance forecasting earlier. Um, that's all about performance analytics. We, you heard about benchmarking this week. You heard about anomaly detection. But what we're now talking about is really predictive modeling. That came with the DX Continuum acquisition about six months ago. And that's what we've been replatforming. So enough talk. I think we're ready for, uh, for some action. <laughs> I guess I'm the action man. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about the machine learning demo. Let me show you what I'm going to show you here. We're going to show you how we're going to select historic data by using features in the platform. We're going to produce a recommendation model, and we're going to apply it to an app, and we're going to build an app that really shows you how to make recommendations for the labs you all are going to take next year at K18. So you see what happens here is we're going to pull that data out of the instance. We're going to put it into our centralized training service. That centralized training service stores your data in order to grind through and produce a predictive model. But once it's done grinding through and producing that predictive model, at that point, that data is wiped off the central service. So again, we maintain that multi-instance architecture so your data always lives within your instance, and we don't commingle that data. And then at the end of the day, we're going to take that, have that model built into your instance, and make a really cool, smart app. That's the goal. All right. So step one is selecting the historic data. Are you going to demo it right now? Yeah, I'm going to walk over here and see if I can pull this off. All right, I want to see it. Are you demoing? Dude, dude, personal space. All right. All right, thanks. All right. That screen's not big enough for you. So I'm going to start typing here on uh, the label. Am I far, far enough for you? A little here? farther. A little farther, OK. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and pick a field that we're going to be able to choose on. So I've picked the table that we're going to pick. I'm going to go off and now choose some fields that we're going to be able to create off this of this. And we're going to say we're going to look at all the information that you've created for the last 12 months. We're going to then figure out what input we actually need on this particular field. We're going to look at class type, class description, user ID, and have that selected as the input into our recommendation engine. On the output of it is we want to find the name of the class that you're going to be taking next year at Knowledge 18. And then, you know, there's this thing called the confidence interval. What frustrates a lot of people most about machine learning or things when you interact with machines is they guess wrong and they just do things wrong. So we want to be able to have things guess right. So we're going to set a confidence interval of what we call 95%. So I want this to be 95% accurate. But there's another group of people, uh, executives, that actually we want to have it a little more 
confident. So let me type in some information here and say that executives, we want it to be 99% confident in terms of what they've done. So basic service now form, filled out the table we want to use, the input fields we want to train on, the confidence interval we want to generate for our model, and I hit submit. And just like that, we've now started to make machine learning easy for you. So let me get this straight. So we had the, um, you selected the data that went to the training service. That's, That's right. That's now the training service. And then, so now it's producing a model. It's crunching through all that data. It's crunching through it right now, I hope. All right. So how long does that take? Can we take a look? Let's take a look. So if I come back over here, to be honest, the data set in the world of machine learning and big data and billions of data points, labs you've all taken at Knowledge17 for the past year and things you've registered for isn't that big of a data set. So if everything went well, I'll be able to click in here, kind of scroll down, and see for this particular data set, it's now 100% complete. So we've now produced that model and put it back in the instance already. All right, so what is happening here is what used to be very complex with clusters of machine and extract the data, build a model, put it back in. That's just like a simple form. It actually looks pretty simple. Um, and are we now ready to start using that model? And yeah, as, as we've been talking about throughout the day, we've actually gone ahead and built this application. So if I go up here and have it loaded in my second tab here, You'll see this is the application you're all going to see for Knowledge18. This is a tool that will allow you to register for labs and actually be part of the experience next year. And what you'll see on this screen right over here for my little login is that we've actually picked labs for you. This is the Netflix, Amazon recommendation engine. And I think one that I want to apply for here is the industry analyst. It's kind of important with my role to go off and talk to analysts. So I'm going to click into that. And you'll see I'm immediately able to register for that lab. No scrolling, no picking, no searching. Just boom, based upon the recommendation that's in the instance, I can have that recommendation presented to me directly. So what we've seen now is we've seen how we can use machine learning and use machine learning within the instance in a very easy to use way, just like you've seen normal ServiceNow applications. It's right into the platform. But what I want to ask you is, what are you going to do in the platform? What are the things that you're going to do to make the platform yours? Are you going to build recommendations in your environment? Are you going to be categorizing and routing work using this capability? Are you going to be doing things like we showed yesterday in the world of customer service or human resources or IT help desks to help those agents get recommendations, categorize and prioritize work, maybe surface knowledge-based information? What are you going to do with this capability that's going to be right there in the platform without you having to go off and learn an entire new discipline outside of ServiceNow? That's my challenge to you. Next year when we're up here, we're going to be demoing your app. Exactly. So let me summarize that and, and capture it. You know, this is really technology that, that is ready for prime time, and that's why we moved, and that's why we replatformed it. Um, this is also the way to increase the productivity. All of you have to do more with less or with the same amount of people, and all of you have tons of data right? that you can now start monetizing. You can start learn from that data and start building those recommendations, those agents assist, and, and route your, your work faster and, and more efficient. And that will make sure that you'll improve your average time to response, that your pickup times will go up, and that workflow gets executed seamlessly. And lastly, we really want you to start building smarter apps. So like Alan said, next year at the CreatorCon Challenge, we hope to see lots of smart apps. And with that, I want to thank you all and call Pat back on stage. Pat.